Who is this new Zodiac person of interest, Paul Doerr? As serial killers go, the Zodiac is quite unremarkable. Three couples and a taxi driver in San Francisco were assaulted during a single year in the late 1960s, bringing his official victim total to seven. Two of the victims survived, both men. Even though one of the survivors reported his assailant as wearing an executioner's hood, the killings themselves weren't particularly grisly or bizarre, despite their surprising randomness. More than 15 letters and postcards addressed to local media were what made the Zodiac case a perfect rabbit hole, the stuff of which obsessions are born. Containing sinister references to added crimes, taunts aimed at the police, threats made against the public, bizarre collages, and above all, cryptic cryptograms and clues, these communications have provided amateur detectives and self-proclaimed experts with an endless supply of material for decades. Welcome to Bad Things, and another person of interest in the Zodiac case. Moreover, Zodiac was never apprehended. This resulted in the emergence of a cottage industry in suspect creation, which has blossomed on the internet and caused endless feuds between the advocates of dozens of different individuals of interest. People have suggested that everyone from Ted Bundy to Theodore Kaczynski, the Unabomber, and renegade Manson family members were responsible for the atrocities. At least three men have presented extensive cases accusing their fathers of being the Zodiac, one of which produced a best-selling book and documentary miniseries on a streaming service. Casebreakers, a group of volunteers with law enforcement, military, forensic, academic, legal and investigative skill sets, claim to have conclusively named a previously unidentified suspect as the murderer last year. And earlier this year, author Jarrett Kobeck wrote How to Find Zodiac, a sophisticated and novel effort to find the killer by analyzing the many cultural allusions in Zodiac's communication. Kobeck claims that, in contrast to Bundy and the majority of other serial killers, Zodiac did not kill for the purpose of killing. Instead, Zodiac's actions were the essential spark he needed to get notoriety, or more particularly, to be published. Zodiac's letters, which exceed his verified victims and were sent during the 1970s, long after he had presumably stopped attacking people, featured allusions to comic books, science fiction, and other subcultural preoccupations of the time. Further, Kobeck hypothesizes that a person who sought media attention as much as Zodiac would not have restricted himself to these efforts at publication. He probably wrote letters to the editors of several magazines on a regular basis. In fact, Kobeck hypothesizes that someone with these interests and a strong desire to see his ideas in paper would have immersed himself in the thriving fanzine culture of the period and even published his own fanzines. A fanzine is an independently produced magazine that is not subject to censorship or the requirement to comply to the business criteria of a publishing corporation. Typically, the creators of fanzines are responsible for all aspects of the publication, including its layout and dissemination. Because these publications are printed in restricted quantities, they are highly valued to their readers. Numerous fanzines were once produced using extremely inexpensive and primitive techniques, with editors covering the production expenses out of sheer affection for the printed product. Kobeck entered Fanzines and Vallejo, a Bay Area neighborhood close to where the majority of Zodiac's killings happened and where Kobeck believed the murderer lived, into the Google search box and finally discovered a man named Paul Doer. Doer, who passed away in 2007, was an obscure person otherwise lost to history. He was a wildly prolific zine publisher and writer of letters to other people's zines, with topics ranging from Tolkien and Hollow Earth theories to Back to the Land initiatives, free love, paganism, and gun rights. Dorr was born in Pennsylvania, married in 1949, moved to California in the early 1960s, worked at the Mare Island Naval Base, and resided in Fairfield, California with his wife until his death, according to the little information available to Kobeck. 
In contrast, the letters, essays and many classified advertisements published by Dor in zines, newspapers, professional magazines, alternative newspapers, trade publications and journals such as American Pigeon Journal are excessive. The door of those writings claims to have sailed a boat from Lake Erie to San Francisco, to have established an off-grid homestead where he hoped to be joined by multiple female ex-convicts interested in communal living, to have purchased another boat that he planned to sail to Mexico after finding suitable female companions for the journey. He claimed to have been a member of the Aqua Sasni tribe, to have built Hobbit-style dwellings called Smiles, and having resolved the dispute extra juridically in such a way that there are fewer people here because of it now, which is seen as a confession to murder by Kobeck. How to find Zodiac is similar to a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is an image that uses circles to depict the connections between items or finite groupings. Circles that overlap share a characteristic, but circles that do not overlap do not share that trait, in which Kobeck assigns parts of Zodiac's crimes or correspondence to certain subcultures and then demonstrates that Dor was a member of each of those subcultures. The hood Zodiac donned while assaulting two college students at a lake in Napa County in 1969, Kobeck relates to the Renaissance Pleasure Fair hosted in Marin County during that month and Dor's connection with the Society for Creative Anachronism, whose members dress in history period costumes. In 2013, an amateur Zodiac researcher unearthed a 1952 comic book whose cover may have inspired a Halloween card given to a reporter by Zodiac. Kobeck discovered a note made by Dor in a fantasy magazine to contact comic book collectors. Kobeck considers the crosshair sign that Zodiac used in his letters to the media to be the symbol of the Minutemen, a right-wing organization that encouraged its members to paint or draw the mark wherever feasible that it may be seen by the public, in order to terrify communists. Dor was on a list of Minutemen members collected after the group's founder was jailed. In addition, a Minutemen bulletin included the composition for an explosive that Zodiac claimed to have used in a threat to detonate a school bus. How likely is it that a man living in or around Vallejo, where the Darlene Ferrin and Michael Magoo murders took place, would be a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism, a comic book collector and a Minuteman? What are the chances that the same individual would promote his desire to purchase a copy of a book containing the term Slaves in the Afterlife, which Zodiac used in many communications? How to Find Zodiac is filled of striking similarities like this, none of which appear relevant on their own, but which, when considered together, seem to definitively identify Dor. Or does it? In a poll taken on Reddit, contributors are not convinced that Dor is the Zodiac without more concrete evidence than just coincidences. As usual with all the new persons of interest, there are reservations. True, there are always at least a few articles that come out every year stating that the Zodiac killer case has been solved, commented one Redditor. One of the main detractors of Dor being a serious person of interest is Tom Voigt. Tom Voigt is the most well-known amateur researcher of the case, having established his website ZodiacKiller.com, a library of Zodiac papers and folklore, in 1998. Kobeck dedicated How to Find Zodiac to a number of academics who did the hard work, with Voigt receiving the highest credit. However, it is clear that the two men have vastly different views on the matter. Voigt acknowledges he has preferred a series of suspects over the previous quarter century, but he now thinks Richard Gajkowski, a journalist, committed the murders. Voigt said, He's just one of those weirdos. You know, North America was tilted to the left back then, and all the nuts rolled to the West Coast. Regarding Kobeck's investigation, he said, I didn't see anything of substance. The bar is pretty high, as far as compelling Zodiac suspects. You have someone like Ted Kaczynski, who is kind of the champion of the handwriting similarities. And then you have the guy with all the coincidences and incriminating statements. That was Arthur Lee Allen.
Voight is especially underwhelmed by Dawes likeness to the Zodiac police designs, which Kobeck augmented by removing the spectacles and adding a mustache. You can Photoshop dark-rimmed glasses on Shaquille O'Neal and post it on Reddit, and there'll be people that give me the shocked emoji. Like, oh my god, he explains. Here are nine reasons Dawes may be a person of interest in this fascinating case. 9. Paul Dorr mostly matches the physical description. What is the clearest connection between Dorr and the Zodiac Killer? He consistently fits the physical descriptions of Zodiac provided by witnesses and survivors. Dorr was 42 years old in 1969, while Zodiac was thought to have been between 35 and 45 years old, of comparable height, sporting a crew cut, and resembling the iconic composite drawing of Zodiac created by police officers believed to have seen him. And although the portrait of a young Dor shows him without spectacles and with a beard, according to Dor's daughter Gloria, her father wore glasses intermittently throughout his life and alternated between beard and clean-shaven styles. Though Dor's weight fluctuated during the 1970s, he had the same stocky physique that was used to define the Zodiac at the time of the murders. Dor's resemblance to Zodiac's purported physical characteristics does not alone make him a top candidate, but when combined with Kobeck's other discoveries, it surely adds gasoline to the fire. Number 8. Dor's writing style is very similar to that of the Zodiac. Dor had a fondness for mailing letters to his favorite zines and also publishing his own. Zodiac is infamous for sending insulting letters and cards to regional California newspapers. Due to the fact that many zines were digitized online, Kobeck was able to locate a treasure of Dor's writings that exhibit striking parallels to Zodiac in both substance and writing style. Number 7. Dor was interested in cryptography. Only two of the four cryptograms and ciphers that Zodiac delivered to newspapers carrying coded messages have been deciphered almost 50 years after they were delivered. Dor was so fascinated in cryptography that he published a cipher in his own Tolkien fanzine, Hobbitalia, just three days after Zodiac issued his famous 213 encryption. Given that cryptography is a somewhat specialized field of study, this is a substantial piece of circumstantial evidence. Number 6. The Bomb Formula On November 9, 1969, Zodiac infamously wrote a letter to the San Francisco Chronicle threatening to bomb a bus, along with a list of the materials he would need to make such an explosive device. In Dor's own zine, Pioneer, he gave a similar recipe for constructing a bomb, stressing that it must be kept dry and emitting the same component as Zodiac, a starter. This shows, at the very least, that Dor had similar understanding of explosive compounds as Zodiac. In addition, this is far from the only weapon-related commonality between the two. Number 5. Dor liked to roleplay Dor reportedly enjoyed role-play activities, as seen by his frequent attendance at the Renaissance festivals, depicted in a photo taken of him. Why is this crucial? For one, it would explain why Dor might have an executioner's hood, as worn by Zodiac when he assaulted Brian Hartnell and murdered Cecilia Shepard at Lake Berryessa, in his possession, if ever questioned about it. Moreover, there was a Renaissance festival in the San Francisco Bay Area on the same day of the Zodiac attack in Lake Berryessa. Though very circumstantial, it is quite possible that Dor visited the festival, even in the same or a similar executioner costume, before traveling two hours to Lake Berryessa and committing the assault there. Number 4. A History of Violence Dor's history of violence implicates him as a suspect or, at the very least, implies he is capable of committing heinous acts such as murder. In a 1974 letter to the editor of his favorite zine, Green Egg, Dor hinted that he had murdered someone, and in his own zine, Pioneer, he said, the only good enemy is a dead enemy. In addition, Dor was allegedly discharged from the military after serving for only one year for trying to jam a fork down someone's throat. 
Daw's daughter Gloria, who would later become a more crucial piece of the puzzle, has confirmed that her father was a violent man throughout his whole life, with a history of assaulting her and other family members. The fact that a man is aggressive does not instantly identify him as a serial killer, but his not-so-cryptic claim in writing that he has murdered someone is quite suspicious. Number 3. Dawes Weaponry Despite the fact that he designed a bomb similar to the Zodiac, Dawe shared other inclinations about weapons with him. Dawe in role play attire displays a knife and scabbard like those allegedly carried by Zodiac during the Lake Berryessa assault. In a 1969 letter to the zine Tightbeam, Dawe discussed casting his own metal blade, and the Zodiac's knife was characterized as having a handcrafted appearance. However, the resemblance also applies to firearms. Zodiac said in one of his letters that he obtained his unregistered firearms either via the mail or by buying them out of state, while Daw railed against the intrusiveness of gun registration in a zine and even placed a classified ad offering to exchange goods for firearms. Number 2. Daw Published His Own Serial Killer Zine Daw himself has mentioned serial killers in his literature. In a 1970 letter to Pioneer and a 1979 letter, Daw describes murders that were widely publicized as Zodiac copycat cases, although he never mentions Zodiac by name. Daw also registered himself as an investigator and launched his own zine devoted to serial killers, but strangely never addressed as Zodiac despite having spent most of his adult life in the Northern California area where the Zodiac operated. Daw doesn't even make a passing reference to a person who he would have likely been familiar with as an adult. Unless, of course, he wanted to avoid bringing suspicion on himself as a suspect. Our number one is possibly the saddest and unfortunately a common occurrence as of late when trying to identify killers. Number 1. His own child thinks he might have been the Zodiac According to a recent interview, Daw's daughter Gloria Daw concurs that her father was most certainly Zodiac. Daw noted that she did not want to trust Kobeck's assertions, as any child of a parent would not, but she could not help but notice the many parallels detailed in his inquiry. Daw said that her father's abuse got so brutal that she left the family home at the beginning of Christmas break in 1968, which would have been no more than a few days before Zodiac murdered his first victim. In addition, several of the Zodiac's murder sites were popular adolescent hangouts that Gloria herself frequented. According to one hypothesis, Daw may have slain Vallejo youths in an effort to frighten his straying daughter back on the straight and narrow. But at the conclusion of the conversation, Daw states unequivocally that she believes the investigations to be accurate and that her father was most likely the Zodiac. Despite the fact that family members are not always impartial or credible witnesses, it is nevertheless intriguing to hear Daw's relatives publicly support his hypothesis. The Zodiac case is an endless rabbit hole of persons of interest, from children suspecting fathers to wacky self-publishing Lord of the Rings enthusiasts. This case and its persons of interest will surely bring up a slew of more accusations and assumptions as time goes on. Stay tuned to Bad Things to keep up to date on this 50-plus year old case that keeps on evolving as the years go by. Thank you for watching Bad Things and another person of interest in the Zodiac case. Hit the subscribe button, like button, and notification bell, and share our channel for our up-and-coming true crime videos.